Alright, so in this video we're going to go through three derivative rules. I'm not going to explain their proofs or where they come from, I'm just going to summarize the rules. But of course I will share some resources for you to look at if you're interested in learning where these derivative rules come from and sort of why they work the way they do. Okay, so the first rule we have is called the power rule. This works on what some people call power functions. Personally, I'm not sold on that name, so instead I just like to think of these as functions of the form x to the n, where n is any non-zero real number. We tend to just say real number a lot as mathematicians, so just to clarify what this is, if it's been a while since you've talked about what real numbers are, just think a real number is any integer, so it could be seven, 25, negative three, negative a million, or it could be a rational number, so that's a fraction. So think one half, seven eighths, 45, 70 ninths, just a fraction. It could be negative two. Or it could even be an irrational number like pi or e or some other irrational value. And then the only specific thing for this rule is that we're not looking at zero as a real number. We want a non-zero real number. That's because if we had x to the zero power, anything to the zero power is one, and the derivative of one has its own rule. The derivative of one is zero since one is a constant. Okay, back to the power rule. So if we have a function f of x equals x to the n, then its derivative f prime of x is n times x to the power of n minus one. So we decrease the power by one and we take that original exponent and put it in the front of the function. So n times x to the power of n minus one. Okay, so let's go through some examples of how this works. Let's say we wanna take the derivative of x squared. The two comes in front, that's the exponent, and we decrease the exponent by one. So I have two times x to the two minus one. That's two times x to the first power. Anything to the first power is just itself. So I have two x is the derivative of x squared. All right, let's try this again, this time with x cubed. So the three comes in front, we decrease three by one. So I have three times x to the three minus one. 3 minus 1 is 2, so I'm left with 3x squared as my derivative. Okay, so this should also work with the derivative of x. So x is actually just x to the first power, we just don't always write that 1. So the 1 comes down front, and I decrease the exponent by 1. Then I'm left with x to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so the derivative of x is 1. Okay, let's do two more examples before we move on. So let's say this time I wanna take the derivative of x to the negative one power. So we follow the same process, negative one comes in front, then we decrease the power by one, so I have negative one minus one. That leaves me with negative x to the negative two power, and we'll leave it right there for right now. Then the last example I wanna show you for the power rule is let's take the derivative of x to the one half power. So the one half comes down in front, then we decrease the power by one. So we have one half minus one in the exponent, and that leaves us with one half x to the negative one half power. So anytime we have x to some power and we're taking its derivative, we just follow this same process. All right, so our second derivative rule is called the constant multiple rule. So this works if we're trying to take the derivative of a function that is multiplied by a constant. So I'm gonna write this out in words first and then we'll look at what the math looks like. So the way we say this is that the derivative of a constant multiplied by a function is just the constant multiplied by the derivative of the function. So for me, this means that the constant doesn't really affect how we compute the derivative. We still use the same process of whatever we're going to do to find the derivative. We just have this constant that gets multiplied by it. All right, so let's use c as our constant, and let's say we're trying to take the derivative of c times some function f of x. When we do this, we can just factor out the c and then multiply it by the derivative of the function. So the c value, that constant, can come outside, and we can just focus on taking the derivative of the function itself. Another way to think of this is just the constant doesn't have any variables in it. It isn't related to x in any way. So the constant can sort of sit outside of the derivative while we work on the part with the variables, and then we can multiply the constant back through at the end. So instead of keeping all of these words, I'm just going to abbreviate this using the mathematical statement, and let's do the same for the power rule. So we say that the derivative with respect to x of x to the n is n times x to the power of n minus one. 
Awesome. So before we move on to the final rule, let's do some examples with the constant multiple rule, and this will build on our power rule as well. So first, let's say we're trying to take the derivative of 5x squared. So we can just factor out the 5, we can keep that constant on the outside, and just focus on the derivative of x squared. So for x squared, we use the power rule, the power of 2 decreases to 1, and the 2 comes out front, so I have 2x as the derivative of x squared, then I have 5 times that 2x, which is 10x. Altogether, this means that the derivative of 5x squared is 10x. Let's try another one. So here, let's take the derivative of 1 3rd x to the negative third power. So we can factor out that 1 3rd, that's our constant, and then we can just focus on the derivative of x to the negative 3. So the derivative of x to the negative 3, that negative 3 comes in front, and the exponent decreases by 1. So from negative 3, we go down to negative 4, and we're left with negative 3x to the negative 4th, all being multiplied by that 1 3rd on the outside. Now we're just left to simplify, 1 3rd times negative 3 is just negative 1, and then we have x to the negative 4th left. So altogether, the derivative of 1 3rd x to the negative 3 is negative x to the negative 4th. Later, we might want to change that negative 4 exponent to be a positive by bringing everything into the denominator, but for right now, we're just going to leave it as is. We're just getting used to these ideas. All right, we're making progress. We've done the power rule and the constant multiple rule. The last rule is just the sum and difference rule. This works when we're taking the sum of functions, so we're adding functions, or the difference of functions, subtracting functions. So to write it in words, the derivative of a sum or difference of functions is just the sum or difference of their derivatives. This rule just works how you'd hope it would. It just means if you have two things added together, you can take their derivatives separately and then just add them at the end. So how we write this is that the derivative of f of x plus g of x is just the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. And this can work similarly for subtraction or for a difference, so we can just put those subtraction signs in the derivative of f minus g is just the derivative of f minus the derivative of g. Okay, so we have our three derivative rules, and we're going to put them all together and do one example. Okay, so let's suppose we want to take the derivative of 7x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 8. So using the sum and difference rule, we're going to break this up into three separate derivatives. So I'm going to take the derivative of 7x to the fourth, I'll add that to the derivative of 3x squared, and I'll subtract the derivative of 8. So now I'm going to use the power rule and the constant multiple rule to find these derivatives. So for the first term, the 4 comes in front and we decrease the power by 1. Then we bring the 2 in front and we decrease the power by 1 on the second term. And for the last term, the derivative of 8, 8 is a constant, so its derivative is just 0. Remember, you can think of a horizontal line as something like 8, and that has a slope of 0. Okay, so our last task is just to simplify this. So 7 times 4 is 28, and that's x cubed. Then plus 6, x to the 1 power. We won't write that 1, just because we know it's there. And then that 0 goes away. So we just have 28x cubed plus 6x. All right, so this has just been the basic introduction about how to use the power rule, the constant multiple rule, and the sum and difference rule. So I also have a video where I'm going to talk specifically about negative exponents and fractional exponents, so check that out for more practice with these rules. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.